In the Soviet Union there were various events that the authorities tried to keep quiet about. Even today, there are secrets that the FSB prefers to keep quiet about. This fuels human curiosity, so journalists compile various lists of events shrouded in secrecy. Information from former Soviet spies is especially appreciated. At the beginning of this video, I want to tell you about the new channel Vision or Interesting in which I talk about interesting events and facts. Go to it and subscribe. I put the link to the channel in the description and in the top right corner on the screen. So, let's keep going. 1. The Sea Monster. The arms race, which began immediately after the war, gave a sharp impetus to engineering design developments of the Soviet Union. One such novelty was the screen plane. In 1966, an American spy satellite captured an unfinished Russian hydroplane. The plane was bigger than any aircraft the U.S. possessed. It was so large that experts estimated that such a wingspan would not have allowed the plane to fly well. Even stranger was that the plane's engine was much closer to the nose than to the wings. The Americans were puzzled and remained puzzled until the USSR collapsed. Twenty-five years later, the Caspian Sea Monster, as it was then called, turned out to be a screen plane. A vehicle that looked like a mixture of an airplane and a ship that flew only a few meters from the water. In the long run, of course, these vehicles were very useful. They could carry hundreds of soldiers or even several tanks at 500 km per hour while remaining undetected by radar. They were more economical than the best cargo aircraft. The Soviet Union even built one that was two and a half times the length of a Boeing 747. 2. Nuclear Suitcase According to the claims of General Alexander Lebed in 1997, the security services had a hundred bombs in a suitcase with a capacity of one kiloton each. Moreover, there was no reliable information about the whereabouts of half of them. Public and political figure Professor Alexei Yablokov confirmed existence of such devices. According to the biologist the creation of portable nuclear charges began in the 70s. The customer was the KGB. In the opinion of Yablokov similar mini-nukes were manufactured in the United States. However, the defense ministry vehemently denied such a statement. It is worth noting that such devices never existed. The high cost of their production was unaffordable even for the Americans. According to the assumption of departmental bodies, Lebed confused the atomic bombs in the suitcase with nuclear anti-personnel mines. Operation Flute The Soviet Union was officially forbidden to develop biological weapons. However, Soviet troops were making secret preparations for the coming biological war. The development of biological weapons was entrusted to the KGB. According to the Geneva Protocol of 1925, such experiments were forbidden. But no ban stopped the Soviet authorities, who began secret development in 1926. Any epidemic or infection that broke out in the country was immediately classified as state secret. Only four people received information about the development of biological weapons, Gorbachev, Yuzev, Kryukov and Zykov, the rest of the politicians remained in the dark. The society pinned its hopes on the witnesses of Operation Flute, but they preferred to remain on the sidelines. According to unconfirmed speculations, the people who had access to classified data signed non-disclosure agreements. Any leakage of information was punishable by law. The Soviet people never received complete and reliable information. The KGB thoroughly cleaned the archives. They concealed all documentation capable of providing information about biological weapons. 4. Party Gold When the Soviet Union collapsed, Various interesting facts about the activities of the Soviet government began to surface. A high-profile incident was the mysterious disappearance of the party gold. In the 90s, the media published various versions. The more information was released, the more rumors about the disappearance of CPSU gold spread. A partially confirmed version emerged after a series of journalistic investigations. Information was drawn from a classified report of Russian State Secretary Gennady Berbulis. According to the latter, the gold reserve was sold by the government. 
However, no one was able to study the report in person. Although there is some information in foreign sources allegedly confirmed by the American banker. It is difficult to assert that the version is true, but it has received the maximum distribution. Also according to some sources, the gold of the party still remains on the territory of the Russian Federation. However, the most rumored version was that the Soviet valuables were stolen and taken abroad. Investigators think the gold is stored in international bank accounts. 5. Gorbachev's Silence On April 26, 1968, there was a disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. However, Mikhail Gorbachev was not informed about the accident until two weeks later. At the same time, the newspaper Pravda on April 27 wrote about the Subotnik organized for Lenin's birthday. Unlike their Soviet colleagues, however, reporters in Sweden published the tragic news in the newspaper as early as April 28. What was the Soviet government trying to hide? Why was information about the Subotnik more important than the Chernobyl disaster? There is a theory that the authorities did not have the necessary arsenal of special devices capable of recording the power of a nuclear explosion. The Soviets were unprepared for a tragedy of this magnitude, much less to admit failure. News of the Subotnik was printed for a few more days before the news columns of Pravda and Trud newspapers published small stories about the Chernobyl accident. Despite the fact that the disaster was global in nature, it was presented as a planned visit by the government to the nuclear power plant. It is worth noting that the Soviet authorities prevented intervention by other countries. On May 5 the leadership of the Soviet Union expressed their gratitude to those countries which were willing to provide help, but it was emphasized that the USSR would cope with the disaster on its own. Why was Gorbachev silent? Why were the people informed about the crash only two weeks later, when foreign newspapers reported the next day? The answers to these questions are still a mystery. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.